welcome everyone. Um, this is the Urban Forestry, Northampton's Urban Forestry Commission meeting, February 16th, 2022. This meeting is recorded. Um, I will enable auto transcription. Okay. Um, welcome everyone. Um, at, <clears throat> I, I said earlier, Marilyn will not be at the meeting um, and Molly is going to be uh, a little late. So um, we can start the meeting. There is no one from the public present. Um, so we can dispense with public comment period. Unless someone else shows up, we can ask them to comment later. Um, I sent I sent about an hour ago, I sent the minutes off to all of you. Mm -hmm. So if you have a chance and you want to review them, You can take time to review them. That'd be great. Just let me know when you're ready to uh, move on them. Yeah, I talked to Molly today. She was coming too. She said, uh, Rich said she was going to be a little bit late. Oh, I'm sorry. I was reading the minutes. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. All good. I just thought of her again. <clears throat> hey Molly. Hi. Sorry I'm late. No, it's okay. We're uh, everyone's just taking a gander at the minute. So Okay, I'll do that too. Take your time. Yep, I've got them here.
I'm done with the minutes. Yeah, I am too. I am too. I'm, I'm, too. I'm done too. Okay, great. Um, with that said, uh, anyone have any comments? Any changes they feel need to be made? No, I move that the minutes be accepted as presented. Can I have a second, please? I'll second it. Maybe Jen, the second, Deb. Um, any discussion on the motion? None. All right, Deb, could you do a roll call, please? Gladly. Rich? Yes. Jen? Yes. Susan? Yes. <laughs> Rob? Yes. Molly? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, chair report. Uh, I have, um, I've received an email today from Henry Lappin, who is the, I think he's the chairperson still of the Amherst Tree Committee. I, I don't know. I know he's on the committee. I don't know if he's the chairperson or not, but I'm assuming he is. He is interested in coming to our, one of our next meetings, which would be in March, um, to discuss some statewide initiatives that Amherst Tree Committee has been working on. Um, that was he was sort of vague and didn't really give any explanation as to what they were exactly working on, but just thought it would be nice to share them with us. So um, I'm still hoping at some point that we can make some time to do a joint a joint shade tree mm. meeting with Amherst. Um, I think it would be good to actually, you know, I, not necessarily maybe a whole meeting, but at least actually have some interface with them or maybe just a few of them from their committee just to kind of see where they're, where they're headed and maybe some other uh, committees, yeah. because I think it's a good gauge for us to see whether or not we're, you know, if we have to do things differently or where we're, you know, are we doing things better than some other community or, or can we get some, can we help some other community with something they're not doing well? So that would be, something that I would like to pursue. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, but we've never, we've never been able to uh, really put it together. Um, we had a nice potluck once. Yeah, I remember that at some park in, uh, in Amherst. Yes, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, is that at our, right before our Wednesday, uh, March 2nd meeting, we are supposed to have, we're having a tentative meeting with, uh, the students from uh, Rick Harper's class, oh, wow. NRC 310 at 2.30 uh, to 3.30 here at Spring Grove. So if any, of, uh, if any of you are interested in coming and speaking to the students, that would be great. Um, it's March 3rd? March 2nd. Oh, duh. March 2nd. And what time was that again? 2.30. <clears throat> And it's in, in person. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. What what's the topic of the class? Uh, that's their that's their capstone urban forestry um, class. Mm. It's uh, basically the capstone course that the students take that are majoring in urban forestry mm. and agriculture. So one of their uh, you know they are they want the students uh, Rick Harper and the, the, the curriculum wants to have them get acclimated to uh, volunteer commissions and how they actually interface with uh, the tree world and the municipal world. So that's one facet of what they're doing. Um, most of these students are undergraduate students. Some are graduate, but most are undergraduate. <clears throat> hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, in April, April 22nd is when the state legislation for the ability for us to meet virtually ends. So we, the, we may after that um, have to go, we will go back to in-person meetings, um, but I, I'm not sure if the state legislature is gonna continue that legislative act. They've done it for a, you know, a year. Um, I'm sorry, Rich, did you say April 4th? No, April, I think it's April 22nd, Rob. It will. So it, it'll be debated. It'll be debated before then, but that's the end date. I see. Um, and so, so far, um, 
the mayor has not indicated whether or not she favors changing it or continuing it the way it is. I we got an email the other day, but it, she didn't indicate either way. So I'm thinking they're just kind of go going to go upon what the state legislature said. She, I think she indicated that she would like to see us continue with um, Zoom meetings, but we can meet in person, which we have done in subgroups. Um, but we, because of the Omicron surge and everything else, and trying to find a location that works for us uh, continuously every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, will also have to be revisited too. So I'm just wanted to keep you posted on that. The Zoom meetings, I think, are great because we can get different people to come easily. And is the state um, situation now is that um, all the municipal um, meetings throughout the state are required to be on Zoom, or that they're allowed to be on Zoom? They are allowed to be on Zoom. So okay, so after that date, if they vote to end that, they would no longer be allowed to be on Zoom. We'd have that, to do that, it in person. That is okay. correct. You you have the ability to dial into a meeting. Um, remotely, but you, there has to be a minimum quorum in person. So that's and, okay. And the, the city can't overrule that. No. Okay. No. Okay. Just trying to get so, the clarification. I mean, I, I agree with Sue uh, meeting uh, in zoom is, is nice because you can actually like for presentation purposes, um, for, um, Right. Having other people that normally would not come to a meeting because they're not going to climb the stairs at Forbes Library, they're not going to find where we are, I think is great. Although I'd have to say that meeting in person, I sometimes think we get more accomplished personally. Um, it's sort of like planting. It's the same way. We, we definitely wouldn't get any planting done if we were doing it remotely, but um, <laughs> I sort of feel like if we meet in person, I think we accomplish more. But it's difficult because of the because of the um, open meeting law, you know, we can't work as a group without actually a subgroup without having a constant meetings. And, you know, yeah. we're a very active commission and we have a lot of things to work on, but we also have a lot of things going on in our personal lives and everything else. So, I mean, it's, there's, there's only so much time. Although I, one of us is gonna be retired soon. So maybe, maybe they could take on a little more there. Jen. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I, I don't, I don't have anything else to add. Uh, there's no, uh, there are no other, uh, there's no um, upcoming um, public shade hearings. No one's requested anything that I'm aware of. Although one person did email me and ask me if we could just come cut a tree down because they're going to put solar on their house. Basically they were saying, this tree has a branch that fell off. We don't want it to crash into our new solar panels. We want you to just come cut it down. And I did a little recon and obviously the people are new to Northampton um, and, and the majority of folks don't understand MGL 87. I just can't go and cut a tree down because they want it cut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna do an aerial inspection of the tree to look in the canopy uh, just to make sure that it's, the uh, crotches are secure and do a little reduction cut, but that's the extent of it. The tree will remain until, it's a sugar maple, so it's not gonna last forever. Yeah. But is it a street tree? It is a street tree, it's on Stilson Avenue. Hmm. And then I received another request for someone who wanted to cut down a shagbark hickory on Route 66. Um, that's a public shade tree, it's right behind the sidewalk. And I emailed them back today and told them no. It's, and I went and inspected it, there's nothing wrong with it. It has a little, um, small cavity at the base of the tree, but, um, and it has some insipid decay in there, but it's pretty solid and it has nice. What is their concern? What is um, their concern? I couldn't tell you because they emailed me like two months ago and I, and I responded to them and I waited and waited and waited. Of course, I, I shouldn't say anything about that because sometimes I don't respond quickly either. Um, they didn't tell me why they wanted it removed. Yeah. Um, and then Linden Tree Care, the company they hired, wants, wanted to remove it, and they, they sent me an email as well, mm -hmm. checking in with me to make sure it wasn't a city tree. Um, and I, I went over to look at it because it's beyond, it's on the back of the sidewalk. So I'm suspect that it's not a public shade tree, but it's, it, is, it falls right on the line. Mm -hmm. so, well, those are only two requests I've had that I've dealt with since the last time that we spoke to each other. Did you get a chance to go to the Washington Ave one? 
No, I've been sitting in my duff doing this, get, trying to get this spreadsheet done. Well, I don't know about sitting on your duff, but <laughs> well, no, I, think I have you're been. getting a lot of things done. <laughs> I have no, I haven't been getting. I, I this is something that I've needed to get done, and this is a different topic we can talk about, but it's something I've needed to get done for quite some time, so we can have an accurate accounting of the trees that and okay. that we um, have planted since 2015, and merging a whole bunch of lists. Um, that Rob had and list that I had and, and then going through everything every year. And then as trees die the following spring, you have to replace them or we have replaced them. So you have to go back in the previous year and you have to find a way to get rid of that particular tree. So it doesn't count towards our total, but still keep the tree in the database. So you reckon, so we have an understanding of how many trees actually don't make it. Um, what species they were. Um, so I, I can show you later on what I've done so far. Then what I'm going to do with the whole thing is I'm going to put it in one tab. And that's the tab that I'm going to land in the, the share drive that we have. And that that'll show you everything we've planted from 2015 till this past uh, November. And it breaks it down nicely. And I'll, and I'll show you, I've added a couple of things since then. But Great, bravo. Yeah, and I've also, I did our Tree City USA. Um, I'm just working on a growth award. So for this year, um, our per capita, uh, if approved, is $26.23. Um, 2020's per capita was $23.95. So, You're saying that's the cost per capita of two residents of Northampton for correct. the work that we do? Correct, yeah. Mm. So we've gone up. Um, Three dollars and a little over a little over three dollars, three dollars and thirty cents in one year, which is you know it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is it is a lot when the average in America is under two two dollars. Mm. So, so I'm just waiting to do the. I have to finish up the uh, uh, growth award, and then I'm going to send both signature documents down to the mayor's office to get signed. I'm hopefully gonna do that tomorrow. But I was been constant, I've been doing both the, the spreadsheet and this Tree City USA, which I know you can't see this, but this is mm. all of my notes, right? I have all these notes mm -hmm. that I have to do everything by hand because our budget is all mm. over the place. And then uh -huh. Sue was very helpful um, and getting and Rob getting me all the volunteer hours, which by the way, um, were tell me I printed this out. Tell me I did not print it out. Um, I'm gonna say it was like 1400 hours, I think, Sue, so, right? So wow, that sounds about right. Yeah, wow. 1400 hours, and that includes uh, your time, um, as commissioners, that includes uh, tree siting, that includes tree planting. Includes tending trees at the tree uh, um, at the nursery. Yep, yep. It, it just about everything, including and in the pruning as well. So, I mean, that's a lot of that's uh, like a equivalent of a full time person that we don't have. A lot of weeding this year. That was new. Yep. That was a highlight of a new yep. thing. Going street by street, weeding, tending to them, mulching. Yep, which I think is. Good, and I think we, Rob and I, have talked about transitioning in the summer months when there's still volunteers who are able to do that to go back and do a little more aftercare of the trees that we planted, um, because we we have the ability to water them, but once they're done with their yearly watering after about three years, hopefully the trees have established themselves. We don't go back necessarily, but we should because you know as we've learned in especially places that are mowed by landscapers. Um, there's damage. Mm -hmm. so. Some of them grow really quickly and they outgrow their little protective cases. Yep. I know when I'm on bike rides, sometimes I'll stop and liberate one. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is some of those, I'd like to actually go out and put another section of uh, tree protection around it. Cause we had to buy more, but it was, it's been, it was back ordered for six months. So we finally got it. So mm -hmm. if you happen to see him, send me an email and I'll send Brooke after it. If I see a tight one? Yep, yep. Okay. Let me know. Um, okay. 
That, that's all I have. Anyone has have any questions? We'll talk more about the tree um, planting update and our uh, the tree planting up in our update section later on in the meeting. Um, I wanted to just keep us kind of moving with the Rotary Club, so I put a Rotary Club in service day update. And Sue, would you be willing to give us an update on that as to where we are? Sure, um, Barbara. Um, Devlin is incredibly focused and hardworking. She took um, detailed notes from our meeting and sent them to Rich and me. And then we um, added some little bit of changes to fine tune what we wanted to do. She's ready to um, really spring into action. She made a, um, a PowerPoint for the club and presented it at a meeting. Everyone in the club will be getting a um, setback tree brochure. She's distributing them so they can become ambassadors. She, she caught everything we talked about and really got it. Um, she would like to go, she's, a, um, she's fairly new in town. She came here because she has some um, grandchildren at Jackson Street School and um, you know a daughter here and she's just jumping into the community. She's a dynamo. She was a longtime school superintendent and um, she'd like to just go straight to the superintendent of schools and say, let's get trees planted at all the schools. <laughs> and uh, so I put the brakes on a little bit and asked her to please wait because we had a parallel school proposal in motion, which yeah. David's gonna talk about more, but um, she's ready to just really um, get as much as we can in motion. So as we'll see what happens with David's presentation on Jackson Street, um, that's probably the scope of a one day giant one day planting. Um, but I'm hoping maybe we can keep her involved to some degree. Cause again, she's a dynamo. She's really a person of action and, um, very thoughtful and really did, um, listen to everything we were saying about our priorities. It was one. So it's a pleasure working with her. Had a nice conversation the other day and she shared her, her PowerPoint with us. Does that sum it up? You're muted, Rich. Thank you. Uh, David, do you wanna chime in and talk a little bit about um, the Jackson Street project as how it might relate to the <laughs> all comes together? Uh, sure. Um, I don't have a presentation, but I'll just speak off the cuff for a few minutes. I think it would be good just because now we we're in open meeting, so you know. Right. The so uh, I um I did a walk around with the Jack the the newish Jackson Street principal Lauren Brown on Monday, and um, I had drawn up a map which I shared with Rich and uh, Sue and Rob showing th 32 or 34 proposed planting sites on the Jackson Street campus. Um, and maybe Rich can bring that up, but uh, so Lauren and I visited every one and she's very supportive of all tree planting efforts. Um, so the thought is that, uh, but she wants to get teacher feedback and then send uh, a final plan to Tony, who's the, I can't remember his last name, but he's the maintenance guy for all the schools. Mm. It tend, tends to be uh, most skeptical, I think, of new trees mm. because of the ongoing maintenance concerns. So the, the idea is that Tony might knock out 30% of the trees on the map and we'll be left with about 25 trees, which aligns with the Rotary Club's interest in planting about 25 trees on April 9th. Mm. I mean, I, who knows if things will line up just that way, but that's the, that's the plan or a plan. I, I like the plan. I, I think I hope that you keep after it and follow up if you don't. I mean, she's probably the principal's probably got a lot of the things to think about. Um, so, you know, if she doesn't call you at the end of the week. Keep keep after it. Yeah, I think following up with her is key. And also, by the way, I think it's important to emphasize that this this ought to be a district wide initiative because the schools are very focused on equity between and among the different elementary schools. So. 
the idea is that to do this at Jackson Street and then to emulate at the other three elementary schools. And I, I guess JFK and Northampton High too. Right. So where does Barbara's desire to go to the superintendent fit in? Would that be helpful in any way? Um, I think, yes, I think it would be helpful, but okay. it's probably best to, to let uh, Lauren Brown, the principal at Jackson Street, kind of drive the process for at least the next week or two. And if she's just not responsive, then maybe the principal can encourage her to focus. It sounds like a great, boy, that would be a beautiful, you know, what a nice uh, collaborative project, you know, to have the rotary and, you know, schools are always a great place to plant. I do, I do know that in the past, we run into trouble with the maintenance folks. And, you know, yeah. some of it is just, you know, kind of, kind of not really understanding you know, some of it is they're not really understanding like the ben the benefits over just being able to mow everything. And yeah, they yeah. this school janitor people have have had to do an awful lot of extra work, so their morale is probably not the greatest. Mm -hmm. But um, if I understand correctly, the budgets for the school would be from the superintendent level, and that that would be. You know, if the superintendent was supporting the fact that the grounds people are being pulled in a lot of directions and we're, you know, make presenting the complications for their, in order for them to get their work done, um, that, I'm just thinking that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I could do a quick screen share, I could show you. Um, you don't mind. Uh, okay, so this is Jackson Street School overview. This is the email from attachments, the email that David sent uh, sent uh, Sue and myself. And I don't know, Rob, are we on that email as well? I don't remember. Yeah, uh, I got it. So this is the, uh, here's Jackson Street right here. Okay. Okay, the playground is here in the front. This is the little entrance that's uh, sometimes open, sometimes not, that goes around the back of the school. So this is a clump, a clump planting, two clump plantings around a sidewalk that's presently just a dirt area. And then as we, there's a, a pretty good sized tree right here and I don't remember if it's private, I think it is. And then David has marked out uh, spaces seven, eight, and nine, or trees seven, eight, and nine um right by the side of the building sort of up on a hill but where there's utilities here that are in the way possibly so um and then um go, hold on a second this is the back of the school and david i think you met with the principal she said that she was interested in actually trying to create some shade for this area that is cross hatched mm. I, sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, it was interesting. She, the cross-hatched area is the area that gets uh, really unusably hot on hot days. Mm. And that's not surprising because that would be, as Rob pointed out, it's really the eastern and western sun in the, in the summer that you need to uh, shade against. So I don't know if it's feasible to add like trees A, B, and C. And, and I'd, I'd love the commission's thought on, thoughts on what trees could be planted now that would offer shade as soon as possible, even if that's in 10 or 15 years. Yeah. Um, and then this is um, another view of the back of the school with another clump planting here, shading the, the rear playground, also creating um, the trees that were in this line, minus the ones that David just had on the previous slide. Mm. Uh, and this I, I is, know there's not a ball field in the back there anymore. No, uh, no, no mm. it's all gone. Huh. 
used to be a softball, two softball fields and a soccer field when I first started working here. Yeah, I played a lot on that softball field back there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm sorry if it was in bad shape. My apologies. <laughs> um, and this is the uh, main drive of the school um, where we thought we would, because I think we had asked to plant trees in this um, <clears throat> in this horseshoe shaped circle mm. before to provide shade. And I think it was poo pooed because they said they can't see the students, but I mean, you know, we're only putting four trees in here and they would be tall, large trees. There's no overhead wires and we would be able to prune underneath them and give them plenty of clearance up to 15 feet so you could see everyone. And then um, some clump plantings out here where the old playground, the wooden playground used to be. Mm. And then um, two, re two uh, succession trees over here at 31 and 32. There are two, um, I think Tilly, I think they're Tilia Cordata that are there presently that have terrible uh, frost cracks mm. that probably originated partially from a little, uh, some mechanical damage, mm. but now have really just grown on their own right up the side of the trunk. Um, and they're identical on the same side of the tree. So it's indicative of frost cracking. Mm. So planting a couple of succession trees there would be a good thing. Inside so the fence? Yes. Yep. Inside the fence, but there is also room to possibly plant something outside the fence as well. Mm. Um, you know, the overhead wires cross and they're over here, so there yep. is definitely room. But, um, and David, did you get any uh, sense from the principal that there would be a lot of engagement from the school on planting these trees? Um, did you mention the Rotary Club initiative at all or their interest in planting? I'm just trying to, what I'm trying to do is just kind of better understand if, let's say for some reason there's 50 people from the school that want to plant that day and we have 50 people from the Rotary Club. <laughs> and I know there's 32 trees potentially, but it would be a conflict, it would be a little bit of a conflict. Um, you mean not enough trees, too many people? Yeah, and, and, and inherently, I think we will, this number will go down because the maintenance staff will push back mm -hmm. sure, on the amount of trees. So my, my only question is, is that did the principal anticipate there'd be a lot of involvement from the school, PTO and the parents, et cetera? Or would this be a place where we could actually have the Rotary Club do their in-service day? Uh, we, didn't, we didn't discuss that. So, I, I mean, I think... The Rotary Club could kind of have the run of the place uh, themselves, if that. But but I, I think that my in, my instinct is that the school will want to be involved in at least the PT, you know, the most active members, and some kids. Okay. And Barbara knows the principal, mm -hmm. and I think she would like to be, you know, especially part of Jackson Street because she has a relationship with the school. Mm -hmm. And we did plant. Um, some trees in the tree belt there and also some trees by the playground. So we planted about six or eight trees. And there were, Chris, um, Chris, um, Chamberlain. yeah, he came by and he helped organize that, that effort, but he was not very successful in getting very many parents out. So things changed, new principal, David's there, people follow, you know, but. Yeah, but, well, I could guarantee a certain number of people. For sure. Yeah. But, but last uh, time, and there was, it wasn't like people were dying to plant trees last time. Strangely, I didn't understand it. But. Uh, uh, this is a question for Rich, Rob, or really anybody, but two trees were removed within the last year. And the principal didn't actually know which trees or even where they had been. Do you, do you know? Yep, there was a... Uh, um... Hold on one second, I'll show you. No, hold on a second. So where where tree 17 is, tree location 17. Yeah. Between there, there was a sugar maple that was there. All right. Yeah, I know that one. And then there was a um, a tree right here next to the portico where the students uh, go into the school. Hmm. It was in a tree pit that was a Norway maple that was shot 
And then there was another tree, which you can kind of see right in here. Mm. There was another tree in here that we took down, another Norway maple. And they both, both of those Norway maples suffered from poor planting location, compaction. Um, and the school grounds crew reached out to us and asked if we would take them down. So typically when we do work at a school, um, I work through the maintenance, uh, the school maintenance department, and they are the ones that are responsible for notifying the school. And we typically go there when school is not in session. So we did that over the Christmas break. Hmm. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. We did that over the summer and we ground the stumps over the Christmas break. So we don't, didn't interfere with the students. So, um, yeah, I, I don't go on school property without having approval from the maintenance staff. And, and this is a question about the su succession planning, but mm -hmm. like with those linden trees, would you plant linden trees where the, the existing ones are? Or does it doesn't matter, you can plant any species on top of? Um, probably can plant any, I mean, I would plant a, a, a large species tree there, something that's probably fast growing. So London plane tree, um, maybe an Emerald City tulip, but it's kind of close to the road and they're not really super salt tolerant. Um, I, we could try an accolade, a couple of accolade elms too. You know, something that would actually be fast growing and spreading so we can actually get some a little, a little bit of canopy into the street. But again, it's all long. I'm sorry, what? What about plane trees? Yeah, London plane tree. Um, you know, the other thing too is that with this whole project, and I, we're over time, my apologies, but this whole, you know, our tree order is contingent on this project. So we're kind of, Rob and I have been working on the tree order and we are ready to like pull the plug to actually work on a contract, but we don't, we, we really have a cutoff date pretty much like the first or second week of March when we have to tell Bob at Chestnut Ridge that we need X trees dug at X time. Um, going to Amherst is a little easier because the trees are on the ground over there, but if we don't hurry up and tag them, then um, we will end up losing them to uh, DCR or some other, um, mm. some other folks. So the sooner we know how many trees we can actually plant at Jackson Street, um, the better we will. I mean, we can plan for X amount of trees, but it would be nice to have an exact number. Yes, Molly. Um, two things. One is that um, when I did the planting site survey in Leeds, there were a lot of planting sites around Leeds Elementary um, along that main road. And also along that, there's a cul-de-sac um, at the back side of the schoolyard that has a very wide strip between it and the fence around the um, schoolyard that would be a great spot for trees. Anyway, I think there's good spots for trees there. The second thing I was gonna say is that, um, would it be worth, if it's one um, maintenance person who does all the schools, um, if that person is sort of hostile about the trees or you know, neutral even, doesn't really take good care. I'm just wondering, um, would it be worth meeting with that person to find out, to get as much buy-in as possible, like, what is it about the trees that's the most annoying? Like, is it that just that they're there and he has to mow around them? Or is there, that's what I'm assuming it is, but there might be some other issue. It would be a shame to have these trees planted and then just have them get scarred because he mowed too close or whatever. It would be, maybe it would be worth talking with the person ahead of time to just discuss it. So I, I met with Tony at Jackson Street School before we planted. Hmm. He's very nice, very thoughtful, very knowledgeable, but um, any interference that the trees cause in terms of mowing or leaves or sight lines or, you know, he's not enthusiastic about it. And so uh, I think that he, on the other hand, does have to respond to pressure from the people he works for, the superintendent, the principals, if they really want it, you know, he was standing there with me, some guy who had not even a stakeholder saying, I really want these trees. So having David there and the principal together, that'll be better. Um, maybe, you know, have, having uh, Barbara come around and talk to this one, one former superintendent to a current superintendent. 
it's 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 you know it takes time for people to go yeah oh i see it's it's imperative we have trees it's not just like causing more mowing i'm sorry Molly, you had some um just one so one other suggestion if you know if we can't change his attitude or get by and maybe we could at least um install better protection for the trees so maybe in addition to the mesh the mesh kind of stuff that they have around them now maybe we could also put like a wider plastic collar around them or something to protect them from getting um rich and i spoke hard. about this and the, the real solution is to just weed around them and mulch because if they're weeded and mulched nobody's gonna uh, come up to them right nobody's right. going to approach them with a grass whip which I right so, so mm -hmm. i think maybe david could keep in mind that once we get these trees planted maybe there are people at the school that will keep them weeded mm. Mm. Um, or, or somewhere, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, you can't really necessarily count on Tree Northampton doing it in a timely and consistent way, necessarily. And mm -hmm. also school property, that might be a little weird. Yeah, but, but um, parents getting together and doing it seems like a perfect- Backing thing. up to Molly's first point on lead school, Rob, I know, there were efforts and there were conversations with Leeds School. And then right. if I understand, they they became overwhelmed with the COVID and they just couldn't so, yeah, Alicia, deal with us uh, anymore. Uh, Alicia has had uh, emails back and forth with the principal and uh, then didn't get a response for a long time. And then Alicia became um, discouraged um, at Leeds. But it doesn't. You know, the principal probably was, as Susan was saying, overwhelmed with some of the COVID issues and stuff and, and may come back. I mean, it wasn't like they said no. They want, I think they wanted to talk about it and wanted to have trees, but became too busy. So that's why I think it's really important that we get this Jackson Street School done and then increase the amount of routes that we're bringing information in that is work with possibly the superintendent or, or, or have Barbara or the Rotary Club. In other words, this is part of the culture change that's gotta take place is that the whole town has to become involved to get trees. Um, I think the, the more angles like David's, you know, working, he's a parent, he's got other parents that are clearly on board. You know, he, he did a heavy lift of just getting the property map and putting the, you know, this is how many trees, you know, it's not theoretical, you know, I have some place we can get the trees from, you know, David's done like a just incredible work there. And um, my experience working at schools is that if you have something driven by the parents, that's your, that's the biggest thing. If, it, you know, then you can bring in, but if the parents want something and the parents are willing to, as a group, you know, coalesce, or there's these, even a small group, you know, and this is like climate change, or this is like young mm -hmm. children are going to be affected. I mean, you know, nobody can turn around on this really and ignore it, you know, like, let's get real. And wow. I think then, you know, you've got this incredible partnership with this um, person, this other superintendent, you know, they speak the same language. So when the time is right to insert her, I think, and you get a golden project like this at, at, at Jackson Street School, I think the, you know, some chips are going to fall. You know, the other schools are going to be like, whoa, you know, we, so kudos to you. That's, I, it's exciting. Great, David. Really, well, the maps uh, especially. Thanks to everybody. It's really been a, a group effort. Thank you. I will keep it on our agenda for next meeting. Um, I just received an email from Henry Lapp, and he said he's going to come if you're okay with it on uh, the 2nd of March. Great. So set aside some time from him. Okay. Um, our next agenda item is the STO. Um, Sue was kind enough to actually take the, uh, the levers for me and actually send out the different drafts of the STO. And then Molly followed up with a um, the, e the present e-code that we have. So did everyone have a chance to look at them and do you have questions, Jen? Yeah. I just have a general, I just wanna make sure I'm thinking about this the right way. So 
the email that was sent UFC STO discussion like this one um, that came from Sue uh -huh. with, the, with the attachments. This was what we talked about in the meeting. They had a subcommittee meeting, right? That was that what it was. Oh boy, yeah. There's the, the January yes, everything. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. To backtrack, last meeting we had, David had some ideas. Yes. And they're in a section of an email. Okay. Including changing it to tree protection ordinance, which yes. I think is brilliant. Okay. And some other points he made there as well. Below that are actual word changes. We as a group went over the prior meeting. The ones that are in red. So, no. so there so there's three attachments to that yep. email. The first yep. attachment was the tree protection zones. Yep. Which was a re, which was a part the of the uh, rebuttal from planning sustainability. The second one that says uh, UFC STO draft and it has my initials. That's the edits that Sue, that um, David and Sue and I worked on, and that was the final edits that we sent to planning and sustainability. And then planning and sustainability sent us back their edits that included the tree zone map. Um, I'm confused because the one that you said, the UFC STO draft, yep. I looked at the properties of that file and it said it was last updated in February of 2021. So I don't think that's the correct thing. I think that was a draft before, um, before the current zoning ordinance. Because a lot of those things that are in that draft are things that got incorporated into the current ordinance as far as at least that's what I'm what it looks like um, to me. So uh, the one that's printed with draft on it, this is what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Okay. So okay. that is if you check the date of that last edited February 28th, 2021. I think that's correct because there's that's not what I'm saying. Hold on one second. Uh, uh, I was just trying to organize in my mind like what's what and what yeah. comes before what. And, you know, yeah, what I mean? there's a lot of versions. So, yeah. um, subcommittee met and we threw out to Carolyn. I think we wanted to go down to 10 inches all over the city. That was one of our main things. Yeah, I remember that. And what she countered with was, how about we have these zones? We'll go to right. 10 inches. We'll even go to six inches. Right. But we're right. going to keep 20 downtown. Right. right. Got you. Yep. So she wants to use the STO as leverage for her, uh, for the sustainability goals. Mm -hmm. And then she had the document with all the red yeah. where she took, removed things and put in things, including this mature tree language. So we had a meeting, we went over the red parts and we came up with a list of word changes on that, okay? Then the next time we looked at it was looking at David's comments in that email. So I kind of put those two things together, but yeah. they're from two, two discussions. Okay. So now we're at the point where Molly very kindly has really looked over um, what's currently on the city website and the version with all the red marks and um, had a couple of questions she came up with. So, yeah. Let me check for a second. So that document that has that, that is a PDF that is in our drive and that, are, that is our final edits from our subgroup meetings. Which one are you talking about? The, the document that you said was modified in 2021. Okay. That that's says all, draft that's long, on it. That's how long we've been talking about this. So then we sent this to planning and sustainability, and then we yeah. had a long delay. And we find I I finally met with them in August. And that the document that has all the um, track changes in it that was in that email is planning sustainability's rebuttal to our draft. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And I have not, you know, and we, we met with Carolyn once um, to discuss the proposed changes. And we told her that we would come in front of the full commission with their changes and have a discussion. And that's what we've done the last couple of meetings. This is where it would be very helpful if we were all together in one room. I know we could look at the papers. Correct. Instead Burn. of trying to go back and forth with emails that we can't respond to and ask questions. Yeah, so frustrating. Yeah. So um well what so, I'm what I'm confused about is um okay, so that the one that's labeled draft, yep. is everything on there um in addition supposed to be stuff that's not already on the ordinance that you're adding in? So this, so this ordinance, the draft one is how we decided we'd like to see the ordinance inserted in the e-code. I have a track changes one yeah. that shows all the stuff, but it's very messy. So I well, just, what I did is I made it into a draft without, I well, took the track changes away because it's a PDF. Okay. So it's essentially like, if I'm looking side by side at that draft together with the existing ordinance. Yep. It might look like it's essentially the same, except there will be a few little things different. Um, well, like for example, this number six, um, 350-12.3 um, D6. Yep. Okay. Is that something that was, um, that's in the existing ordinance? That's correct. Okay. So what, um, there wasn't anything that was really changed there. It no. looks like, okay, here's something that's different between the two of them. Um, D4, 12.3 D4. In your draft, it says, um, the assessment shall be reviewed and approved by the city's tree warden. And, oh wait, that's what that one says too. Oh yeah, that's the same as in the draft too. Um, Carolyn changed it to, um, approved by the planning board or whatever um, upon being advised by the tree warden or something like that. Is that acceptable to you, Rich? Yeah, that's fine because I don't have, um, the enforcement of this ordinance really is done by the planning board, not by the tree warden. It's appropriate then. If these were public shade trees, it would be a different story, but I'm fine with that. So it says trees that are approved for removal through special permit by the planning board. Right. That's three five zero dash twelve point three D six. D six. What about it? That's what you were just talking about. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's in the it's in the that whole section is in the existing ordinance. Okay. So I guess I'm not really sure what's different between that draft. And the ordinance. No, well, what's different is the, 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 the 10 inch, the sliding scale is different. Um, no, not Carolyn's. I'm not talking about Carolyn's one, but your, the draft that, that you edited that ends in RP edits. Well, this was not, this was edited by David Sue and myself. So, I mean, basically, um, we, I basically started from the very beginning where it mentions trees under 350, and this is how we went with this. So number one, inventory of significant trees over 10 inches DBH by a tree risk qualified certified arborist, which shall classify trees in terms of location, species, DBH, condition, observation, primary maintenance need, and risk assessment. That is not in the existing ordinance. Right. Yes, there is no 11.5B, I think. Well, there, no. Oh. There is 11 oh. four, one. There is all this stuff is in the ordinance. This is all the ordinance number. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, um let's see. Oh, I did I did print out that section. Um section 350-2.1 significant trees. Any tree of 10 inches in diameter, breast height, or larger or any other tree specifically identified as a specimen tree in a tree inventory plan adopted by the planning board. Again, there's the 10 inch number. Um, the legislative findings are the um, 1, uh, 
12.3 did not change. That is the draft that I'm reading off of. Hmm. Um, okay. So B didn't change, C didn't change, D did, D did change, D number three oh. changed. Uh, oh. It used to just say, um, Director of Public Works, we insert a tree warden. Ah. Ah. Okay. Um, number four, we changed. Trees that are deemed hazardous after undergoing a risk assessment and confirming in writing by our uh -huh. qualified certified arborist, yep. the assessment uh, shall be reviewed and okay. by the city's tree warden, which is right. now then changed to planning board uh, yep. in consultation with the tree warden. Yes. Um, five didn't change. Six didn't change. Oh, okay. Um, six A, one A, one B, or B did not change on that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. E, placement standards. Um, e. One did not change, one A did not change. Uh, one B did not change. Mm. One C did not change in the existing ordinance. Uh, oh. One D did not change. Uh, what about the thing about the hardiness zones? That was... Um, something that Carolyn added that's not in the draft one. Correct, but the draft, so I'm just, from the original ordinance, what Sue, David, and I worked on, which is the PDF that I sent, mm -hmm. just highlighting what was changed and what wasn't. Yeah. And so that, so basically what you gotta do is you gotta take the draft that we, draft that we presented to planning sustainability and look at the draft that I, that Sue sent that has the track changes that came from planning. Mm -hmm. and we have to compare those two documents. Yeah, okay. Because all right. I would say don't get hung up on the existing ordinance as it is because the draft that I put together that David and Sue and I worked on is what we came up with based upon what the existing ordinance is with changes that we'd like to see. Okay. And then Carolyn and Wayne, I think it was Carolyn and Wayne both put together their suggested changes after I met with them. Okay. One of them was the tree... Um, the tree, uh, the tree zones. Okay, so we can basically look at Carolyn's draft because it shows in red the things that are changed. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I have a comment. I, I would like to, um, I liked what David wrote about that um, paragraph A, 12.3A. I think David's paragraph that he proposed is very good. Um, it's more specific about what the benefits are and uh, includes additional benefits that weren't listed originally. Yeah, where does that fit in? That's 12? 350-12.3A. A, okay. I agree with that, with what Molly's saying. 350-12.3A, replace, with David's right, which paragraph. he yeah, which he had, which is in that email that he sent on February second, right. And it read in Northampton. Oh wait, well, recent legislative recent, findings and yeah. intent. Yeah, recent Research. scientific study studies have expanded the understanding, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The only comment I would say about that is, are we removing the word significant trees, like in the, almost at the end and replacing that with protected trees? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throughout. Yeah, right. that's what we're trying to do, right? Right, so oh. on, on the bottom where Carolyn, in the last page of Carolyn's changes, she said, throughout tables, replace the term significant tree to mature canopy tree. That's where we would put protected tree. Well, what I'm saying is, is in this uh, placement 
paragraph that David wrote for legislative findings. Oh, oh yes, yes. Which would which would go three three fifty dash twelve point three a towards the end of it. <laughs> it says the city of Northampton finds that lowering the size threshold for significant trees. It should say. I don't, should we use that terminology there or should we go to protected oh. trees? But then you're saying protected trees protects trees based on blah, blah, blah. Oh. So, See what I'm saying? Right. So it, so it does and it doesn't. So one of the things that I struggle with is that a 10 inch tree is not necessarily a significant tree. And a 10 inch tree on a, on a, uh, on a project that's going to stay there may not be protected. It might be so far away from the construction that it's not identified as protected. So I just, that's the only thing that I, that comes out to my mind, but yes, I, I think it should be changed to protected tree. Or it could be just, could it just be trees? The city of Northampton finds that lowering the size threshold for trees protects trees what if you say trees as uh, per section 12.3B? Then it, you're talking about those specific trees. Yeah, good point. That's very good. Trees, so the wording is trees per section. 12.3B. 12.3B. Protects trees based on the environmental contribution to the city and consistent with 11 guiding principles and sustainable Northampton. Yeah. The city of Northampton finds that lowering the size threshold for trees, comma, per section 12.3B, mm -hmm. um, prote um, protects trees based on their environmental contribution to the city yeah. and is inconsistent. Okay, so we're going to take that whole paragraph. Does Deb need the wording for all of this? Because if so, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll want to send her that whole paragraph. Put the language in the, in the chat if that helps, Deb, but I can. So the other, the other thing that I might, that they might talk at is uh, recent scientific studies. Mm -hmm. So because this is an ordinance, um, if you're going to cite recent scientific studies, you have to have some place where people can go see the scientific studies. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, ordinances are not written. Um, yeah. Sort of like in real, I guess in real time, yeah. like real data. Yeah. So we might, even though that's correct, because scientific data is always, we're always getting new scientific data or new data on how trees are, um, you know, providing benefits to us in a lot of different ways. I don't necessarily know that we can word it that way. We could just start that paragraph with urban forest yeah. provide. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Yep. Oh, where does that go? So a second sentence, just, just cross out the whole first sentence and then cross out these studies have shown that and just start at urban forest provide ecosystem services. Got it. I'm doing it on a, I'm making a mock-up. So legislative findings and intent, urban forestry forests provide ecosystem services that benefit all residents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mitigating air pollution, lowering ambient temperatures, resulting in reduced energy use for, for uh, use for cooling buildings, reducing stormwater runoff volumes and pollutants, reducing erosion and soil loss. And providing habitat to sustain populations of urban wildlife. City of Northampton finds that lowering the size threshold for significant uh, oh. for, for size threshold for, and this is where you inserted the for trees per for section three fifty trees right. comma per section twelve point three b. Yep. Based on their environmental contribution to the city and and is consistent with the 11 guiding principles in the sustainable comprehensive plan 2021. The only thing I might suggest changing in that part is the word fines. Okay. The city of Northampton um, 
it's not so much fines because that's like after you've done something and you're looking at the results, it's more like they like propose or that they is lowering. Um, the city of Northampton recognizes that lowering. Oh, yeah. Mm, recognizes. Threshold. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. Um, the other thing, too, is that we, the 11 guiding principles of sustainable North, North Hampton Comprehensive Plan 2021. We got to look through the ordinances and see if our sustainable plan is actually mentioned in any of our ordinances. Again, because it's a document. Mm. I guess it would be okay because I think I I think I wouldn't put the date in there. I think I would take the date out. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like when we reference the tree list and planting guidelines, we don't say like version, you know, mm -hmm. edition 2018 or edition 2019. Mm -hmm. Because the plan, that plan will be updated again um, at some point right. in time. So you don't want to have something tied right. to a particular date and ordinance. Right. right. I, one other suggestion on that. Um, instead of saying the city of Northampton recognizes that lowering the size threshold, um, that's like assuming that people know that it used to be different. And we're talking like the process of how the ordinance was made. I think it should be more like the city of Northampton recognizes that um, having variable size thresholds for different zoning districts protects trees based on their environmental contribution. You see what I'm saying? Instead of saying lowering the size threshold, um, yeah, it, it's like it assumes that you know like that the size threshold was higher before. So read that sentence back the way you would have I it. I said, um, the city of Northampton recognizes that variable size thresholds according to zoning district, um, I, I, tree size thresholds for trees uh, per zoning district, uh, something like that. Is that what it's called, what they're called? Zoning district, like what is that? Uh, I don't know what, what, what does she call those? Um, yeah, zoning district. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or maybe we could say that that varying, oh, oh, I know, that varying the size threshold for trees per section, blah, 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 according to zoning district protects trees based on blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got um, city of Northampton recognized that var varying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the size threshold for trees per section. Mm -hmm. um, 350-12.3B. 12.3B protects trees. Wait, 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 wait. After that, 12.3B um, by that we're varying the size by zoning district. Well, so varying the size threshold for trees. Sorry. You lost me. Okay. 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 Let me read the whole thing. Yep. The city of Northampton recognizes. Go slow. The city of Northampton recognizes that varying the size threshold for trees, comma per section three fifty dash twelve point three b, comma. Yep. Oh. Oh. Wait. I know a better way to say it. That varying by by zoning district, the size threshold for trees per section, blah, 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 protects trees based on their environmental contribution. Yeah, the varying should be together with by zoning district. I don't I don't think that uh, makes sense to me because it's actually not the trees that we're protecting. It's the, we're actually promoting a, uh, a master plan. In other words, the, the, re uh. the reason for doing this is not that by changing the size, we protect trees. Oh. It's that we're- Oh, you know. yeah. It's not their environmental protection, it's yeah. contribution, it's it's more- um, you, you said it, it contributes to the- um, the, the, to the, the, goal, the, the goals of the zoning for the city or something like that. Exactly. 
Yes. You're right. It doesn't, yeah, it's not um, based on their environmental contribution. Right, in fact, kind of the opposite. Well, only in an indirect way by discouraging um, development in yeah. the areas with the lowest diameter. Yeah. Um, I'm going to interject for a minute, just a time check. It's 5.44. Um, I, I don't want to stop the discussion because things are great, but I just want to give you a little time check. Molly, we had you on there for spotter lantern. Oh, no, no, no. We should just finish this once and for all. Okay. Well, I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be finished once and for all. I think we're <laughs> well, I mean, finish our, our comments about Carolyn's um, edits. Okay. Okay. City of North Hampton recognizes that varying by zoning district, by zoning district, the size threshold for trees per section mm -hmm. 12.3 B. Um, okay. Then instead of protecting trees, um, what's the word? Like not enhances the zone. Aligns. Aligns. That's it. Aligns with the, um, you could either say the goals to um this is getting too long i would say we even need to talk about this like that it aligns oh well, i see consistent true. with well maybe we don't need to put that in there maybe we don't need to even say why why it's happening we did put in the part about the value of trees and this Second part is all about saying why it's a good idea to do this, to do Carolyn's idea. It, do, it does leave an opening for people then to argue why it's not a good idea. Yeah. I, I would just really? inter interject to say that the there, there's nothing magical about 20 inches uh, DDH right. or 10 or six. And I, I would encourage the commission to take, to be independent minded about that threshold and really yeah. try to try to base it in science because we yeah. don't have to just spit back what Carolyn fed to us. I mean, we can come up with our own proposal, which is right, you know, less than that, more than that, whatever. But uh, but finally, I guess any threshold is going to be arbitrary. Well, do we even agree with Carolyn's fundamental idea of having the variable, you know, and does what we think even matter about that? <laughs> You know, different questions. In both do we things. agree that? Um, well, first of all, there's the fundamental question of do we agree that it's better to, you know, build infill in those urban areas rather than um, develop the outer areas? That's the first question. And then, if we do agree with that, which is that's the goal that they're trying to achieve, do we agree that um, that having variable tree mm -hmm. diameters that are protected is uh, effective way of doing that. And then the third part is if we agree that it's effective, then what are the actual diameters that, that need to be done? So there's like three different levels. Well, I, I very much think you well stated the one and two. And, and it, from my point of view, yes, we really much, very much want to support their goal of infill. Um, the third part of what should the actual diameters be? I think you also pointed out it's ultimately going to be arbitrary. I don't think that we have the ability to kind of come up with a science of what they should actually be. We'd have to have diameters of all the trees in some kind of like computer program. And, then... and there's variables like Rich has explained to me. Sometimes there's trees, junk trees, or there's trees that have grown together and they can't really support mm. themselves without Mm. They're not really good, strong, standalone trees. They're supported by smaller trees around them. It's just so many different variables involved. Right. Yeah. What about a double trunk tree? Like how far below, like how low does the fork have to be to count as two separate trees? <laughs> they come in all shapes. There, there, so, there are different, yeah, there are formulas for how to decide on our DBH that are, I can't remember, Rich would know what that is, but... Um, yeah. So, so well, so, do we all do we all agree with Rob that we want it? You know, we go along with the Planning and Sustainability Commission's um, goal to have to encourage infill and discourage um, 
development in the outer areas? I guess I, so. I do. I think it, yeah. it it's yeah, good for our overall canopy. It might not look pretty lot by lot, you know, in neighborhoods. I mean, there was again, um, a big letter to the editor about the Bay State neighborhood and three more houses going in by New Way. And um, it did mention trees. I wanna point out that some of the most, like if you look at the carbon footprint of individuals, people that live in New York City have some of the lowest carbon footprints of anyone in the country. Uh -huh. And I don't think that's intuitive. People look at New York City and think, well, that's not an ecological way to live, but uh -huh. uh, very few two fam cars with two and three car, families with two and three cars, people uh -huh. commute by public transportation. Uh -huh. Right, um, that's one big difference. Yeah. And we so, don't have that system. Also, all their, their buildings are, most people live with either their floor or their ceiling or their wall in common with somebody else. So they're not heating their whole unit. Right. And so so having cluster housing, I mean, is ultimately, I mean, people, I mean, you know, react to cluster housing, go, oh, townhouses, you know, that's not, but that is cluster housing close to downtown and people walking is probably the most dramatic lowering of a carbon footprint that mm. people can do. Um, yeah, as long as it really truly is balanced out by less development in the outer areas. Yeah. I've always been skeptical about, but this this would actually, um, hopefully, if it's strong enough, would the concept at least, would actually discourage building in the outer areas. Well, I think that, that I don't know about discouraging, but in terms of what's been happening, but every time you see all, there's so many houses being built near downtown, Mm -hmm. And there is a premium. People get more money for houses near downtown than not downtown. So that, so so by allowing every time one of those houses is allowed to be built, presumably that family that might otherwise live five miles, oh, miles out. out of town is getting a house near downtown. Mm -hmm. How is that not discouraging? It is. I mean, it's discour it's 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 offering an alternative which people are choosing. So in other words. Okay. People are actually given a choice saying you can have a house near downtown or a house not near downtown. You are choosing downtown. There, there's a premium. You get a lot more money for a house near downtown than out on a two hour acre lot. Strangely, I mean, counterintuitively perhaps, but, uh, but uh, a good example is the townhouses down by the post office. You know, oh. the old church, you know. Yeah. They're packed right in. Those are. The people that move there, instead of buying two acre lot and, and mm -hmm. building a house, two of their walls or many of their wall, side walls are, are have a hundred percent insulation because they're they're heated by the neighbors, and mm -hmm. and those people when they go out to dinner are not going to drive there probably, mm -hmm. and so it's working, and 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 the, some of those people probably would have, you know, built outside the town downtown and they're getting a great premium for it and that's what's mm. that's what's making it work well I, I, rob i'm curious do you, do you feel because can you support infill development and also a reduced threshold for triggering the sda do you think those things are consistent i mean at some point they're not going to be if it's six inches for example that would that would discourage the kind of infill development the city's like but at what point like what, what's the, what's the right trade-off that i think is what we're searching for right mm -hmm. let's okay so now we're down to the last question that molly's asking what are the right numbers right yeah and so i don't really have a feeling for what the right numbers are but mm -hmm. I, I do know that like on some of these lots that have been infill lots that are, people have been like the one that i guess um sort of above Fruit Street. And uh, there are some down, downtown, fairly large pieces of land that people have wanted to develop. That it can add up to thousands of, quite a few thousands of dollars if you lower the threshold far enough. Um, Would that actually discourage them, you know? I think, I think potentially. It, compared with hundreds of thousands that the thing costs? Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know, except that, you know, they're trying to build every bias in towards discouraging people from building on two acre lots and not discourage them from building downtown. Can I, can I get a clarification of the, um, 
like what projects require site review, are those just things that um, deviate from the um, from the zoning rules for that district? So the project that Sue mentioned a few minutes ago, which is on Landy Avenue, was approval not required. Uh huh. So which that one? Lot, that lot was able to be subdivided under the existing infill or um, the new the new one from yeah. last year. So which one are we talking why, about? That's why the trees that are between Landy Avenue property and Thirty Nine Landy Avenue that are over twenty inches in DVH have no protection. So there's a square footage right marker if it's over a square footage special permitting kicks in right yes. yeah that's all this is talking that's the only thing that this ordinance addresses this is site plan site plan approval slash special permit yeah and so that's all this ordinance touches so people that if your neighbor molly wanted to build a house next to you this doesn't apply yeah you know yep. um, and this is where there's a lot of confusion Ugh. because people don't understand what this ordinance really is for. And a lot of the infill development that we're seeing today on individual lots that are that do you know that do not meet the square footage she was talking about are just standard either A and R, approval not required by the planning board, or um, a building inspector permit. You know, I think the STO. Yeah. The way this ordinance is written, I think, is going to benefit us because it's going to want, it's really going to deter people from building large um, development divisions and projects yeah. that are out in Ward 6, Ward yeah. 7, and part of Ward 5. In forested areas. Yeah. I mean, I will tell you, there's multiple lots that were sold on Sylvester Road. And this is a different mm. subject, but it plays into this. And they, they bought, I think, a two acre lot as a building lot. They built one house. They have virtually cleared a site that is so huge for the one house. And they took a lot of trees down. And this was a wooded area that's been wooded my whole career. So that is just by right construction that this ordinance doesn't touch. Right. You know, right. so we've done a lot of hand wringing about this ordinance and trying to tighten this up. <laughs> that's really but, but the question is, is that without the right, without data, where are we actually losing the trees? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, are we really losing the trees through the STO and site plan approval? Are we really losing the trees yeah. by by right construction? Yeah. It, you know, this right. is a hot market and there's a lot of money flying around and people yeah. are buying up land like it's no tomorrow because they don't make any more land. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not, I think we, we need to tighten this ordinance up, but I then think we need to kind of change our focus a little bit. And try yeah. To go out it's not. Backwards. That exactly. impactful, right? What's happening with the by right construction and how? Yeah, that, because the by right construction can cut down trees that are forty inches in your side yard, anywhere downtown, and there's no way to stop any of it. Yeah, and eventually, what's going to happen is that the economy is going to go in reverse, or the housing market is going to slow down, and the SDO is not going to be relevant as much as an ordinance that is related to an infill type mm -hmm. um, to protect by right trees through by right construction, which, you know, is another subject, but I, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Well, given that, I think we should stop the fine to fine tooth comb um, uh, looking at this thing and, and not worry so much about the exact diameters. You know, it seems like as good as guess as any of what would be effective. Um, I like I still like David's paragraph and how we've done that, but maybe we should just leave off that last um, sentence since it's so troublesome. What do you guys think? I mean, we can. I mean, Sue, would you be willing to uh, turn that around and send it to us so we can all view it? In, in a, yes, in um, I got a little lost towards mm -hmm. the end of the conversation, so I will do my best. That's fine. Um, we can't back and forth on it. Rob was yeah. just saying that instead of it, it's not doesn't have to do with environmental contribution. It has to do with aligning with the zoning uh, desires yeah. of the city goals, zoning goals, or something. Development okay. goals. I under I think I understand the meaning that you want it to have, but my version at this point has several um, incomplete started and then stopped sentences. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yes, I will do my best. Is it allowable for Molly and I to go over it without uh, open meeting violation or not? It, it probably, it probably, it probably would be because this is something that we are going to vote on as a whole commission. As a whole commission, right? So it's just a matter yeah. of the wording in one paragraph that everybody's going to see. No decisions. Correct. So we would have to discuss this in open meeting at our next meeting to make the final tweak to it once you've given us the updated um, paragraph. Yeah. So by next meeting, the goal would be to have a list of the changes we yep. want to make to yep. sustain planning and sustainability's version. Yep. And then we could potentially vote to say, yeah, we all agree on those. Yep. And then, then we would volley come, it back. Then we would lob it back to them and then we'd see where it ended up. If they're okay with our, our and if they're okay protection. With it, if they're okay with it, then what we would do is uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainability and um, the UFC would approach the mayor and ask the mayor for her support so we could get in front of city council. All right. Oh, I, I see like, um, just three, only three issues that I just wanted to, that I have questions about with this thing. Sure. I know it's six o'clock though. So okay. well, um, one is that. how do people feel about the planning board being the one who approves the whole thing instead of the tree warden? It has to be written that way. Oh, okay. Because All the right. Planning, the planning board is, um, has a legislative power when it comes to zoning. Okay. Enforcing zoning in Massachusetts. Okay, another one, um, that one that says the project um, uh, about the net zero buildings and the affordable housing units and the protected open space. Um, is there any kind of, um, I looked up the definition of open space and it just says land that's not developed on a certain parcel. Is there any um, like minimum um, percentage of the lot or even minimum dimensions. So they couldn't like take a 10 foot strip all around the edge and call that open space. I don't think that that's how it's calculated. I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I think that typically what happens is the open space is one giant chunk. Okay. Out of every project I've worked with, there's been um, a section that is permanently protected. Okay. Space. So it's not. It should be. It should be like that. But I didn't know if there was some loophole where people could make these really right. gerrymandered little space, you know, <laughs> polygons. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Um. The other the other main issue I have is, is it says um, so the other alternative is to pay funds to the city for tree replacement. Yes. It says in accordance with the above formula. And where is that formula? Which formula? That's half the DVH. I know, but um, the money, the tree replacement fund. That's not put in here for a specific reason. Which is? Which is that the, the number can change. If you put a dollar amount in order, oh. it can never be changed. Oh. Hmm. Okay. So the above formula is talking about the diameters. That's correct. And then whatever the formula happens to be that is going to be applied by the planning the planning board is what's applied. Okay. If that's clear to everybody else, it wasn't clear to me. Um, okay. And just, I wanted to point out that the um, hardiness zones that they have in here, um, 7B um, is like Northern Florida. So it's definitely forward thinking about climate change. <laughs> <laughs> The trees have to be able to grow in those, all those zones. Yeah, we're going to need something that's going to take all the flooding we're going to have in 2050 because we're going to raise sea level by a foot by then. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so sorry. I want to go to this Northampton rehab forum they're having at six. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm done with my comments. I'm, I'm okay with this, the changes as we've discussed them. Okay. So if you'd be so kind to put something yes. together in an email, I'd appreciate it. And then we can just kind of all buckle down and look at this thing one more time and then have a final conversation at our next meeting so we can move on to bigger, yep. brighter things. Not all these other things, yes. 
but that's yeah, more but to I, talk about than this little well, thing. We, we, I have to say, we spent the last year and a half talking about ordinance more oh. than I ever thought we ever would. But. All right, uh, can I ha have a motion? Anyone? The other two items I'll table to the next meeting. We'll go from there. Um, does anyone have anything not anticipated by the chair they want to announce? No. Okay. Can I have a motion? Everyone's okay with the journey. I see all nodding heads. David, you're not. David, hello. No, no, I, I, okay. I too, I'm nodding my head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Can I have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting, please? I'll move to adjourn. I have a second. I'll second. A second. Any discussion? No discussion. Sign a hand. Raise a hands, please. All right. It's unanimous, Deb. Meeting is adjourned. Thank Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.